Hello all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, welcome back. This video is going to be a pain to edit. Have you ever put something off for so long that it just became a thing and it didn't need to be a thing, but because you've been procrastinating it and putting it aside for so long, it has become a thing? That's this video. I actually reached out to some of the artists I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, so long ago, so long ago, and they were so nice. And then I don't know if just the pressure of that got to me. I, I haven't, and I didn't film it. I didn't film the video. I feel like for the past however many months, there's been just like a baseline of anxiety in my system. That's from the fact that I know I haven't done this video yet. I, I chose this list of artists because I believe that each one of them has something distinctive that they're doing that beginner art YouTubers or artists on social media in general can learn from or just generally appreciate because they're so awesome. All right, that's enough rambling. Let's actually get into the video. First up is Lee Alexen. I hope I pronounced that right. She is a YouTuber, powerhouse on this platform, super super successful on patreon has a super successful online store just generally the coolest in an online environment where pretty girls drawn on procreate is kind of the standard her work is really apart from the rest and one thing that i think contributed to that is the power that comes from being original. Everybody wants their art to stand out, right? Like that's not a revolutionary concept, but I think Lee is someone who does it really well and really organically. She uses traditional media, which sets her apart from all the procreate artists out there. Her subject matter is more around nature and animals. She isn't afraid to be rough and experimental with medium. She is just, instinctual and in how she paints and it's really really awesome to look at her use of color is interesting she has her own like unique palette that's kind of wrapped into her style she goes in with paint and then pencil crayon and then you know no sketch paint and then sketch over it and then like and the end result is so cool it's so cool and also when we're talking about originality a big part of lee's popularity i think at least is her YouTube channel because she is just generally a very unique and like original and authentic person. So her studio vlogs have a lot of charm to them just in how she is. So the takeaway for you, if you wanna learn something from Lee, I think it would be to just be yourself. Why are we starting on such a cheesy note? <laughs> Don't feel like you need to draw certain things or use certain things to make your art or talk in a certain way or film your studio vlogs in a certain way or like structure it in the same sort of format as somebody else who's successful because if someone wanted to watch a studio vlog like they would go to the original you know you're not gonna outdo the doer authenticity and just being yourself is gonna get you a lot farther making content than anything else will yeah so basically, be yourself. <laughs> Catnip was one of the first people I started watching on YouTube and I feel like she had a huge part in popularizing studio vlogs on YouTube. Catnip is another person that's just so authentic and original and unapologetically herself, but we already talked about that with Lee, so now we're gonna talk about something different. And the lesson that we're gonna take away from this is the power of appeal. One mistake I see beginner artists make a lot is a confusion over what kind of art they need to be making to be successful. If you look at Catherine's art, realistic, technical drawing, it's not her focus. Her focus is on these cute freaking characters. Her style is so universally likable. And that's the power of appeal. Her art is appealing. It's nice to look at. The colors she picks aren't realistic. There's no complex usage of lighting techniques. It's just cute and it looks good. And for what it needs to be, it does it so well. There's no one way to make good art. Good art, good art is subjective. What is, what is good art? There's like technically difficult art maybe, but I find drawing cute things really difficult. So to me, that's difficult. 
You know what I mean? She has a whole business. There is an entire enterprise behind Catnip's doors. Have you seen her Etsy? My God, an enterprise. It's like Santa's workshop in there. So draw cute stuff. Don't let anyone tell you that it's like less valuable just because it's cartoony because there is absolutely a way to be successful, whatever that means to you, with that kind of art. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be true to yourself and what you like to draw and what you like to see and the end result will be 10 times better than if you did otherwise, boom. Coming off of two artists who do studio vlogs that we can see a lot of their personality and behind the scenes and day-to-day -day life, here's an artist that doesn't do that all that much. Hikala. Like Lee, Hikala uses traditional media, which sets her apart from, you know, the hordes of digital artists on the internet. Obviously, incredibly skilled. The art speaks for itself. It is beautiful. It is beautiful stuff. But I'm not going to talk about her amazing use of traditional media. I'm not going to talk about the perspective and lighting and just atmosphere in her backgrounds. I'm, I'm not gonna talk about that, actually. I'm gonna talk about something a little unexpected. I'm gonna talk about her masterful use of social media. I've touched on this before in my social media advice for artists video, but hey, Kala does it so well. She has a unifying style that stays consistent whether she's using watercolor or inks or any other medium, really. You can see her characters, the way she draws them, it's the same. There's a through line here and people on Instagram love consistency. Look at her feed. In general, it's the final image and then the video and then a final image and then a video and then a final image and a video and it's addicting. And if you find one of her videos or one of her illustrations, you click on her profile and there's a bajillion other ones. And then of course you're gonna follow. She even uses consistent music in every single one of her videos and consistent filming for all of her videos. And yet somehow it never gets boring because she was always pushing the boundaries in what she's drawing. And then you want to talk about leveraging your social media following effectively. In every single one of her posts, there is probably a hundred people asking, what brushes do you use? What inks do you use? What paint do you use? What brush is that? What, what, what pen is that? What is that? So what did she do? She made a supply box and it sold out in two seconds. And now it's a regular thing, more supply boxes. Like, like it's one thing for you to be just insanely talented at art. And then it's like another thing for you to also be like a social media, just natural. And it's a little unfair that she does both, but hey, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Next up is Shane Barton, who is quite possibly one of the most delightful people on YouTube hands down. And I just had to mention her because she does literally all three of the things I just mentioned so well. Like number one, being original and being authentic. Her art style has evolved over the years definitely, but like has stayed just very unique and original to her. Like there's no one else's art looks quite like Shan. And her personality just shines through every single one of her videos and her studio vlogs. I love Shan's videos so much. Similar to Catnip, she isn't necessarily making these photorealistic technical masterpieces of fine art. No, but her art is adorable and so charming. And then talking about consistency, let's talk about building on a series. I first found Shea Barton from her sticker sheets because, you know, on Pinterest, on Instagram, they looked so good. Instead of making completely different and separate designs for each sheet, it, they were built on like a series. They all like worked together. They all had like similar motifs and colors and style and it just came together into this beautiful and incredibly satisfying array of products at her disposal. She had a series, she built on it with the consistency that Instagram and small-minded pea brain people like me love because ooh pretty colors and then she took that and made an educational youtube video about it that went viral and that is effective use of social media speaking of people on youtube who give tutorials that i cannot believe i'm legally allowed to be watching for free anusha syed anusha is just Anusha is a published children's book illustrator. 
experienced in the industry. And she's Canadian. Like she is a legit illustrator first and just does like social media as like a fun extra. Girl for free? You're gonna tell us this shit for free? I can't put that in. She is so genuine and her videos are filled with like so much legit like knowledge. She knows her stuff and there's such a lack of actual like professional advice on YouTube because hi, look at me. I'm an art student talking like I know something. She actually knows something. And people recognize that, oh, this is different. This is, there's, there's not, no one else is really doing this like this right now. If you want to talk about what you're doing to set yourself apart from the peanut gallery on YouTube, you know, of which I'm a part of. Being an actual, like legit professional illustrator, giving professional industry advice, that, that'll do it. That'll do it for sure. Trying to focus on one thing all these artists are doing that's like, I think is contributing to their success on social media. Like, it's impossible. They're all doing everything. She is genuine. She is original. She has such a likable style. Her style is so amazing and just like full of charm and appeal. Anusha, you need to make a Skillshare because I would pay for it, um, if nothing else, to as like a thank you that you've just been giving all this information away for free. I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to be receiving it. Like if you haven't watched Anusha's videos yet, oh my God, I'll, everyone's like below, go watch her videos. Now jumping off of that into like actual published illustrators, um, Ngozi, what is there that, how can I properly put um, Ngozi into words? I don't know if webtoons were around when she was first publishing um, Check Please, aka one of the best web comics ever made. Um, if it was, it was not very popular. Like, I think she got like halfway through the story of just posting it on like a Tumblr blog. Like there was, this was, this was a revolutionary time in terms of web comics. And she somehow even took the bar even further. Also, she's just genuinely the nicest person ever. I waited, um, like half an hour in line to meet her at, um, the Toronto Comic Convention. I've never been more awkward in my entire life. I was literally just like, hi. Thanks. Um, can I have one of those? Oh my God, like I couldn't speak English. And then she was signing it and she was like, what character do you want me to draw? And I was like, Jack, please. <laughs> Anyways, I guess the, the takeaway from Ngozi is um, just like the what you can do with your art. Now webtoons and web comics are a lot more popular, but you know, just in general, storytelling with your art. You know, a lot of artists, myself included, have stories that they want to tell in addition to their art. Why not? Like it's another layer to just drawing pretty pictures that can really help people just connect with your art and find you on a different level. And there's so many ways you can do that. You don't have to make a webcomic or a webtoon. That's just this example. Um, if you haven't read Check, please. It's my childhood, dude, you gotta read it. Finally, I'm gonna mention a, a account that a lot of you probably haven't heard of. And the reason for that is the takeaway, which is th the power of niching down, like really niching down. So this is technically like two people that work together, um, RPG Tunes and R&W, or Niels and Rose. And they make D&D content, content for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, which, as you can see, I'm a fan of. It's amazing how many more people you can find and like target effectively by niching down instead of just making, I don't know, general fantasy content. They have D&D like themed merch and art. They also do, they have maps and like printable tokens and um, minis and monsters, like a literal treasure trove of D&D content that is on a consistent style with the great social media presence, you know, booming Patreon. And because it's so targeted to people like me, those people can find them much easier and then they'd be much more inclined to actually, you know, 
support their work, like buy those, buy those mini campaigns, buy those campaign sets, buy those settings, because it's targeted to them. I don't think they'd have been able to find their patrons or just like anybody else who orders from their shop nearly as easily if they hadn't niched down so much. So if there's something else you're really passionate about in addition to your art, see if there's any way you can combine them and just really target those people specifically with that interest, whatever it may be, and you may be able to see some more success in your artistic endeavors. This video is gonna take me literally forever to edit, so if you liked it, if you got anything out of it, if you feel bad for me even, um, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, I appreciate it. Make sure to check out the description box for links to all of the artists I mentioned in this video. Show them some love, they're amazing. I have also recently updated my description box with links to all of my social media, as well as all of the equipment I use. This, 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 that. So if you're interested in any of that, give it a look. And I will be streaming soon. I've literally had family and friends events every single Sunday for like three weeks. I will be streaming soon. Stay tuned. I make new videos every other week, except for when I don't, and... <laughs> I'm a <laughs> So I will see you then. <laughs> Bye.